Hey guys, Brian with Cajun Cardboard coming at you from the great state of Louisiana with another episode, episode number three of NBA Past and Present with my good friend Jonathan Pixley. And today is a very special episode. My <laughs> friend came up with the idea. It's the thing he's been most excited about since we started doing these things. Uh, did you want to go ahead and tell him what, did we ever decide what to call it? We were trying to think of something that wasn't quite as disparaging yeah, it's not about it's not about um, we're going to call it the all anti Naismith team because it these people go against what James Naismith had in mind whenever he invented the game of basketball. Um, you know, you could go anti Greg Popovich or anti Red or I don't know how you want to go about it. But I think just Naismith in general, if he would he's rolling over in his grave watching how these guys either act or play or <laughs> That's the key. That's the key. Act or play or both. Right. Because these and, guys, some of the guys yeah. we're going to talk about were really good players. Uh, you know, some of them. Uh, some, some of them. them we're not. Some of them. And, yeah. uh, so it's not about, it's not about you know, a, a pure dislike or hatred for them as human beings. Uh, it's about a, a, a complete and utter disdain for their existence on a basketball court. When we first discussed this topic and we were going to have this show – I, I was like, oh, good. We'll call it the all hatred team because yeah. we very casually throw around the word, oh, I hate this guy. Yeah. Mm. I was going to say, I don't really hate any of these guys. Yeah. Um, I don't yeah. think I really hate any of these guys. I hate watching some of these guys. How about yeah. that? You can say that. Because, that's you know, my show is all about positivity. Yeah. Uh, I like to promote positivity. Yes. Everything about the card collecting world and the hobby and social media, generally speaking, people who – scams, frauds, complaining, calling people out, bitching, uh, all that stuff gets all the clicks and all the views. So I've always wanted my show to be a little bit different and try to focus on the positives. So this is mostly just going to be about making people laugh and making people see it our way that these are guys that we hate watching play basketball for yeah. one reason or another. And it's going to be really unique why each of us dislikes these players. But let me let me set it up. So here's how we're doing it, because we talked this through, and for once we're actually on the same page. We're going to have a first and second team, all anti-Naismith team, or all hate watching these guys play team, right? The, the, the five guys we hate watching play most, current active, the next five, current active, and then we're doing a historical where the player has to be retired. He can no longer be playing basketball in the NBA. An all-time anti Naismith people we have most hated watching play basketball all time yep. on another one team just five guys yeah I think also it brings I think it actually is there's a positive spin to take on this because by us explaining why these guys are on our list it really tells the viewers more of what you're about and your show is about like what you see as positive in the there game you go. we're looking for right so yeah no doubt and and let's just get this out of the way yes we're just two middle-aged dudes who don't play NBA basketball, who wish we could, right. who wish we had the money, who are calling people out. So just get it out of the way. Yes, I, that's going to be the like comment du jour. You're just too good. Yeah, that's right. That's exactly right. That's what all social media, that's what all content on the internet is, is just people who can't do what other people do, talking about what those people are doing. And so it's that's what exactly what we're It's paid millions for, by the way. That's the issue. That in like, And that's what... That's what renders them fair game. Like, you know, I wouldn't go call out, you know, a local accountant down the street in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, you know, who's who's making 60 grand a year because he sucks. I'm not going to talk about him on here. I'm going to talk about millionaires who are stealing money from their NBA franchises. So uh, that's what we're going to do, man, uh, for better or worse. So how do you want to attack it? I assume you want to leave the all-time team for last. Yeah, for the, sure. The, the, the retired all-time hatred team. You want to leave that for last. For sure, but I, I do – I do. Uh, I think we start with second team, and then we just second play. team. But you got to let me start with my FanDuel section. Oh, I forgot. You have a great FanDuel story. So we talked a little bit about that. Turn your volume up so people can hear you. You're, you sound quieter than normal. Is this better? Yeah. Okay. What did, what did you do? Just get closer and yell? I turn it up a little bit. Okay. Um, so this is actually not a great FanDuel story at all for me. Um, I told you uh, we were talking a few days ago, and I told you how uh, Russell Westbrook uh, was a twenty-eight hundred to one uh, odds to get a triple double in a game, and I put twenty-five dollars down, and then I can't wait. Twenty-eight hundred? 
Yeah, it was like twenty eight hundred, I think, to one. I would have won seven hundred bucks on the on the bet. Okay, betting twenty five dollars on twenty eight, like it was a plus twenty eight hundred. Okay, that he was not going to get a triple double. And then I canceled the bet, and so I, I four went seven hundred bucks. Right. Well, I look last night, and I try to make one to two bets a day. Right. Stay in, stay fifty dollars or less based on the money that I've accumulated. So Anthony Edwards has been trending in the triple double direction for a little while now. Okay. And I'm like, all right, I, at some point he's going to break through. Cat's still not playing, you know, um, Delo's back, but who cares? So I bet last night $25 that he would get a double double and $25 that he would get a triple double. And so 8,000 plus 8,000 was his triple double odds. Okay. $25 down to win two grand. He goes 27, 13, and nine. <laughs> that is a that is an unfortunate story. And you know, sometimes Jonathan, they review assists and add or subtract. So there's always a chance the next morning you could have woke up to a really good story. Yeah, they didn't. But I I won the double double bet, but I didn't win the triple double bet. So I ended up winning about 120 bucks as opposed to two grand. But the triple double bet would have would have paid you two grand on a twenty five dollar bet. Two grand. Okay, so I must not understand odds because that sounds like forty to one to me. But I don't understand odds. So. Well, it's plus eight thousand. So you take twenty five percent of that ultimately. Eighty to one. Oh, eighty to one. Yeah, plus eight thousand. Oh, I get. It. Okay, so you just it's like eight plus eight thousand if you bet a hundred. Correct. Okay. Yeah. So two thousand if you bet twenty five. So eighty to one. I'm right. sorry. I don't, I've never gambled, so I don't know how yeah, all that yeah, stuff works. It's all based on the odds, obviously. So, yeah. But I, yeah. So I was like, so, I'm not back out of this Westbrook deal like I did before. I'm going for it. 25 bucks, boom. And he went 27, 13, and nine. He did go 27, 13, and nine. So does that mean you put Austin Rivers, D'Angelo Russell, Naz Reed, and Jeremy McDaniels on your all hatred team? <laughs> no, but I should. Uh, <laughs> Somebody guys, missed the shot they shouldn't have. Yeah. Some Somebody in that lineup missed a shot they shouldn't have. Yeah, yep. they they even had some guy. Oh man, did they take Edwards out of that game early because they were winning? Don't know. Did you watch it? I didn't watch it. I never. Oh. I've gotten away from it. I was gonna say that would be really that would be really frustrating. <laughs> That's a reason not to do Fanduel. I did watch um, I, go lay that ball in at the end that I told you about. We we talked about a few episodes ago, but yeah. Uh, I haven't watched it. So anyhow, move on. Fandu all right, over. let's do it. So I think we go one at a time on our second team active all anti Naismith team. Do you want to start or do you want me to start? Once you crank it up, go ahead and crank okay. it up. Okay. I am going to start with um, Eric Gordon. Eric Gordon is squarely on my team. Um, he uh, he never really had a chance to make the first team because there's guys that I dislike so much on the first team. He wasn't quite there. Here's the reason I don't like Eric Gordon. Um, he's miserable to watch play. He plays no defense at all. Um, and, and, you know, Jonathan, a recurring theme of guys that I don't like watching play basketball are guys that this is the overriding theme. They think they're better than they are. Yes. It could be, it could be a star. It could yeah. be a guy on the bench. If you think you're better than you are and you act that way, Yep. It drives me freaking bananas. Like not knowing how many shots you're entitled to, you know, if you're the fifth best player in a starting lineup yeah. and you think you're the second best player, I've got a huge problem with watching that. Like it irks me. It drives me nuts. And Eric Gordon epitomizes this because he's on a team. Like, correct me if I'm wrong. The whole purpose of the Houston Rockets is number one, get Victor Wimanyama. Yep. Number two, develop the hell out of four, I think, high potential guys. You don't think as highly as me. Kevin Who's Porter there? Jr., Jalen Green, uh, Jabari Smith, and Alperin Shingun. Those four oh, players. Shingun. Those oh, four players yeah. are, I think they're going to be very, very good NBA players, better than average NBA players. Some of them already are. Yeah. Um, Eric Gordon does not fit at all. So, number one, he doesn't know what shots are his to take. He takes them all. He takes every shot he gets. And his game is disgusting. His yeah. game is disgusting. He can't go by anybody anymore. Um, he doesn't guard anybody. Uh, the most important thing is he's playing the three. He's yeah. like six four. He's playing the three. Is and guess what? I, I don't know. He's around there. Guess who should be playing the three from LSU? Who's actually a player yeah. that fits perfectly for that team? 
Because yeah. he does play defense, and he's very flexible, and he's a good glue guy, and he plays hard as hell. He's the opposite of Eric Gordon, Tari Eason. Yeah. So it yeah. makes no sense to me. I've, I've said this many times. I know his father just passed away, so condolences. But that dude, Silas, is the dumbest coach in the entire NBA. I think he's the absolute worst coach. He's completely in over his head. And if I had an all-hatred coach, he would be on my team. And he's getting a pass because – Nobody thinks they're supposed to be any good. But those dudes, like you said, they drive me nuts watching them play, but they are mega talented. And 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 I thought Eason was the guy you were saying we're going to say that they should be developing. I forgot about Shingun. You're right about that. Um, I will say this. Eric Gordon is not on my list, but he is in a group uh, that is on the outside looking in, and I really couldn't decide which one to pick. So I picked one guy to put in here. Okay. Um, but, but they're all – Gunner two guards uh, who are it's, – it's beyond – now, correct me if I'm wrong for you. This goes beyond irrational confidence, right? This is like – you're talking about like – when you say people who think they're better than they are, you're talking about dudes – you know, you have to have some irrational confidence to be successful. Listen, like, listen. It, that, right? And it doesn't it's, – it's not just irrational confidence like shooting the ball. It could be you just think you're better than you are. Like you think you're a stopper. Guess what? You're not a stopper. You're not even good at defense. You know what I mean? But but let me get – can I guess one person on your outside looking in for your second team? Sure. Yeah. Will Barton? Yes. <laughs> I love it. That's great. That's great. Okay. Him, it's him, Austin okay. Rivers, Reggie Jackson, and Eric Gordon were my guys on the outside looking in. And the thing is, Reggie Jackson's a good pro, but, like, I just – He is. You know, watching him play. You know? well, he, he was. Well, he he's probably still is, but, well, he's better than all those guys on your list. Yeah. yeah. Right now. So I had to put this guy in, even though I feel like he's become a, an effective NBA player. Obviously, he has. Uh, but just because for so long, he was near the top of my list. And that's Jordan Clarkson. Um, oh, yeah. Who, who is – he's a good NBA scorer for sure. I'm surprised. I watching him play. Really? I'm surprised at that. That He doesn't bother me at all. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I mean – I, I'm, was, I'm a lot more okay with 39% field goals than you are. So it that's started probably good. with me when he was with Cleveland, as you well know, right? Yes. When they were at championship level team, and yes. he's in the full, and he's like, "Oh, I'm better than LeBron," and it drove me nuts. And I just haven't gotten over it. Honestly, is what it comes down to. So yeah. um, he would be on my list uh, on my second team. Yeah. Well, just to be, just to take people back, and some people watching may be too young to remember this, but you do recall going back to your boy Reggie Jackson. Uh, when he was in OKC, it, he was coming off the bench, and Russ was the starter, and, yeah. and Reggie was really good as a young player. Yeah. But I remember he was basically a look. It's either me or him. You're gonna have yeah. to choose. And they're like, "Bye, Reggie. <laughs> See ya." <laughs> he sent his ass out of town. <laughs> so I remember that. Uh, and it, you know, of course, it was very clear Westbrook was gonna be a phenom, and Reggie Jackson was really good. Uh, but uh, but that was an easy choice for the Thunder to make at that time. So poor Reggie from the jump. But uh, he's he's made a lot of money, so he's gonna be okay. All these guys have made enough money; they're gonna be okay with two yeah. random middle aged dudes disparaging them on a uh, on a show just to get some laughs. All right, so uh, so Reggie Jackson for you, Eric Gordon's in for you on your second team. No, 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 no. Uh, I said I said uh, Jordan Clarkson's my guy. On my oh, Jordan Clarkson. That's right. That's right. Reggie Jackson. Reggie Jackson. Will Barton out. Okay. Um, Man, I'm surprised. Like, Eric Gordon is so much more hateable than Jordan Clarkson. Um, Eric Gordon dreams that he could be Jordan Clarkson right now. Let's put it that way. They also don't carry themselves the same. I feel, again, go back to Cleveland, Jordan Clarkson. It started there for me. And so I, I just haven't gotten over it, you know? I mean, yeah, I understand. Look, keep in mind, Jordan Clarkson's a much better player than Eric Gordon right now. No doubt we, about that. Yeah, no question. We've carried. Now, I'll carry. I'm about to carry some stuff back years, a decade. You'll see in just a second. Uh, number two, you're not going to believe this, and this is – I'm spoiler alert. I'm going to do two at a time right now. They're both on the Milwaukee Bucks. Who okay. Anybody who watches my show knows that's my favorite team in the world, and I've always got somebody every year that yeah. irks me, and this year I've got two. Okay. Um, I went down to see the Bucks last night, by the way. I got to see Giannis put 42 and 10 on the Pelicans. And I, for some reason, got to see Valanciunas go like 38 and 17. Yeah. I don't know why, but he did. <laughs> and uh, I got to see one of these guys. The other guy didn't play, thank God. Uh, and it's Wes Matthews and George Hill at a combined age of 89. I cannot, for the life of me, understand how a two time coach of the year, under any circumstances whatsoever, would ever put Wes Matthews on a basketball court in the NBA. I, I cannot, for the life of me, understand it. His statistics, 
Jonathan, his statistics this season, and, and I know there's somebody screaming at the screen, he's a great defender. No, he's not. He's a yes. horrific defender. I watch every game that the Bucs play. He's absolutely a terrible defender. He's 6'4", 220. He's 36 years old. So there's not very many good 36-year-old defenders. His PER is 6.8. He's averaging three, one, and half of an assist. Yeah. He's shooting 34%, and uh, his effective field goal percentage is obviously under 50. 6.8 PER, Jonathan. His career PER is below average. At no point was he an average NBA player in the NBA. Right. right. Uh, well, and then George, George Hill is my other one because he's the same player except – his behavior is different. Wesley Matthews thinks he deserves open threes. George Hill just takes them because he's responsible for taking an open three because Giannis threw it to him. So George Hill is just over the hill. He was my 10th out of the 10 on my two teams. Uh, and it's just it's because he's on the box. And I really used to like George Hill. He used to be a really good player, really great, kind of under the radar, solid. Back, back in the 70s, I think. Yeah, back in like 84, 85. Yeah. <laughs> So Wesley Matthews, however, thinks he's the man. He thought he was the man in Portland when he was next to Damon, those guys. He thought he was the man then. And uh, and he's uh, he stole a lot of money from my Milwaukee Bucks. That's going to be an overriding theme. People who steal money from my Milwaukee Bucks and yeah. don't earn the money that they receive. So yeah. I got two right there for you, Wesley Matthews and, and, uh, and George Hill. Wes Matthews falls in the P.J. Tucker, Robert Covington category of – Guys, that I can't figure out why people think they're so valuable. I have, I just can't get it. They're not, even, they're not very good shooters, and they can't guard anybody anymore. So what? I don't, I don't. Know. Anyhow, um, I'm going to stick with your Bucks uh, theme here that you have, and I have nothing against the dude. I like him a lot. I can't stand watching him try to play basketball, and that's the Nassus Anadokounmpo. I hate. Watching him on a basketball court. This is not okay. I'm this afraid. is not okay. I'm afraid for the others on the court, including his brother. Which normally he's not out there when his brother's out there. But I'm afraid. I'm afraid for their health. I yeah. don't worry about it. Okay. A knee. I don't a think he thinks foot. he's better than he is. I don't think any of those things. I just can't stand watching him play basketball. That's it. That's all there is to it. Because he's not a basketball player. He'd be an incredible defensive end. Incredible. He would be an incredible high jumper. Yes. Long jumper, triple jumper, yes. probably run the 400 at a world-class level. When it comes to energy, I mean, the guy probably logs more miles just running up and down the, the sidelines on the bench than anybody. He's an incredible teammate. For that yeah. reason, he's not getting anywhere near my team. And the other the other reason is he doesn't hurt my team on the floor because he never gets on it. Whereas yeah, Wes Matthews – I'll say this. I'd rather you throw his ass out there than Wes Matthews 100 times over. No. You can't do that. You can't do Jonathan, that. did you hear what I said? Wes no. Matthews is averaging 3, 1, and 0. 0.5. Yeah. And, and you may be right. It, it depends. Like, I, I guess you're right. It's either way. They're both, they're both killing your team regardless. But uh, Thanasis might also hurt somebody. And that's Last like, year, he averaged 5, 1, and 2, and he was playing over 20 minutes a game. Yeah, that's impossible. It's but, impossible. Uh, again, I'm talking about the pure uh, – the purity of, the, of a basketball player. By the way – I think Thanasis might be the greatest rugby player ever if he played. Think about he that. Could, he could be a pro in a lot of sports. Oh, my God. Uh, okay. he, he really uh, could, yeah. I'll take another one here. Uh, and this also goes in line with um, guys that – I've got nothing against them. I'm not even sure he thinks he's better than he is, although he might. Uh, but he is just not a basketball player. And this is going to rub some people the wrong way who don't pay close enough attention to it because they hear all these things. But Jonathan Kaminga – I can't watch him play basketball. I can't. I can't put him on a court. It, 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 I don't want to throw a shoe at the court or my phone or whatever whenever I, I at the TV whenever I watch him play because he gets blown up more by uh, I don't know people on podcasts and radio. Barkley, Ernie Johnson. Oh, oh my! Oh, this kid is talent. This kid is so talented. Why is he talented? Because he looks like he should be talented. Right? Is, is it because he can jump really high? That's why he's talented. He can't shoot. He can't dribble. He can't really guard either. He can't guard. Yeah. He's as stiff as it gets. Yes. Yes. So I can't. I think him. he's absolutely terrible. And that's why you would be very surprised to hear he's on my first team. I like it. I thought that I thought there was a chance. I thought there was a chance. He's on my first team. I don't like people getting credit for things that they can't or haven't ever done. Yes. And so he 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 makes my first team. Um for sure. For sure. We'll talk about it more when I get my chance. 
Okay. Uh, <laughs> Dude, take it off. We can't see it. We can't see it. Take it oh, off. yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, all right, I'll have to close that down. Sorry. I forgot I was on screen share still. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Don't look. Don't look. All right, I'm back. Uh, so I, so you've got my Eric Gordon, Wes Matthews, and, uh, and George Hill. Next, uh, I've got two choices here. One might have made it onto your first team, but he could also be on your second team. P.J. Tucker. Hmm. Yeah. Did you yeah. think he was going to be on my first team? You assumed he was. Yeah. Yeah, I did. I don't hate him as much. I, I don't hate him as much. I feel like he's been humbled like he needed to be. Mm -hmm. um, did you ever watch Game of Thrones? Yes. Okay. You know, you know how Cersei had to be humbled, right? And walk through the streets, Shane, yeah. throwing tomatoes at her and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Uh, P.J. Tucker needed to be humbled. I, I think he went 10 consecutive games without scoring a point or something stupid like that. Yeah. Um, and so uh, I think P.J. Tucker has fallen from what would have been a first team member for me, for sure, to, to my second team. Um, but another guy that you're open for a reason. It's yeah. just, that's just that's the quote, right? You're open for a reason. Um, uh, every once in a while, you'll see him dribble. And it looks like, you know, he's 20 feet away from the floor the way he dribbles. He looks like Stanley from the office trying to dribble it. Um, and he's a, I think he's an absolutely atrocious defender. Yeah. I think he's better off guarding a seven foot two guy in the post than trying to guard any perimeter player in the NBA, not named Jonathan Kaminga. I agree with that. Um, I don't have him on my team. He was outside looking in and here's why I don't have him on my team. I can't stand watching him play. Don't get me wrong, but I don't, I, I don't know why, man. I never got the vibe that he carried himself like a guy that I'm fixing a name, for example. Um, and I, like, I don't ever feel like he thought he was the guy. And I may be completely wrong. About he, de that. he definitely never thought he was like the guy. But yeah. if you but if if you were interviewing him and he's and, and say, hey, name name the 10 most the 10 best defenders in the NBA, he would have included himself every time. Yeah, you, uh, you yeah, I would say that. And, and, and in all reality, he probably would have made the team ahead of the person I'm fixing a name had it not gone down this year for this individual like it has. And my guy is Jay Crowder um, because Jay Crowder sits out because he's not starting for the Phoenix Suns, who are a championship-level team potentially. Yeah. Who Who are you? Like, who, we, what do you think? What – like, you were a good, solid pro. You you know, like, that's fantastic. You're a better version of P.J. Yeah. Tucker. But what in the world – makes you think you should be starting ahead of Cam Johnson or uh, I don't know, name some of the guys on the freaking Suns. you know? I mean, Cameron Payne, Cam Johnson, Michael Bridges, uh, Mikhail Bridges, whatever you want to call him. Um, I don't know. Yeah, no, I, I'm with you on that. He's, he avoided my wrath because he's out of sight, out of minds. Yeah. And like, right. I have him in there because I still consider him as a part of the NBA. And well, his, his name is going to come up a lot in the next, you know, forty-five days as we approach this All Star break because I've yeah. already heard like the you know the talking heads like, well, Jay Crowder is going to be high on the list of missing pieces for championship contenders. Okay, all right, we'll see. Yeah, we'll <laughs> see how it goes. Yeah. Um, so. Let's see. What is he? A three and D? Is that the allegation? He's a three and D. That is the allegation. Yes. Okay. Well, he did have a couple seasons where he shot it okay. He's played 10 seasons of basketball and shot 40% from three once. What was his numbers? Um, what were his numbers last year? His numbers last year were uh, 10, 4, and 2. And he shot what? What did he shoot? 40.4 uh, from the field, 38.9 from three, yeah. um, which is actually okay. Um Oh, sorry. Last year, my bad. He was he was nine two and one, and he shot thirty nine percent from the field and thirty four percent from three. Yeah. So, is it fair to say he's hit that wall since he's thirty two and a half and but sucks he, ass? He shoots it. If he's even a hair open, he's jacking it up. Yes, and, he is. Yeah, I, I don't know. And he you know does. What? He I does think he's the guy. He thinks he's a guy out there. He thinks he's the missing piece. That's for yeah. sure. Yeah. So and I don't think he's. A good, I don't find him to be a good defender personally. Not yeah. anymore. Not anymore. I mean, there was a time where he was. Elite. I we, I got to see him play when uh, Marquette came into town and played uh, LSU. And I'm yeah. trying to think. They had another stud that was there with him. Who was that? It was Jay Crowder. Jimmy Butler wasn't there. No, there was one more really good player. He ended up being a pro, but I don't remember who it was. I don't know. I have to think about that. I'll go look up that Marquette team. He lives uh, on the team with again Tucker Covington. Those guys of. I'm going to grab you and hope I get away with it on defense. 
A hundred percent. He that. I mean, PJ Tucker invented that team. Oh, you know who invented that team is my the guy that's going to be on my first team. Uh, we'll talk about it. Yeah, we'll talk about it. Don't worry. Who's your last guy on your uh, second team? Hold on, I want to try to find out who else was on that. Darius Johnson Odom was on that team. Do you remember Darius Johnson Odom? And Jimmy Butler was on that team. Okay. Yeah. Jeez. Good that's what it was. Yeah, and Darius Johnson Odom was a really good player as well. He was a junior that year when Jimmy Butler was a senior. Um, and Dwight Bikes was on that team. He also played in the NBA. Damn, they had four dudes that played in the NBA on that uh, on that team. Vander Blue was on that team. He also played in the NBA. Hmm, interesting. Um, okay, sorry. My last player, Marcus Smart. I'm assuming he's on first team for you. Oh, man. Uh, Did you cut him? He didn't make either one of your teams? Uh, he didn't, and I, and I wanted him to so badly. Um, okay, so – let me let me let me let, me, let me explain why he's on my let me explain why he's on my team. So he, cuz he's on my team for different reasons. The the guys that we've talked about so far are just putrid, absolutely useless and terrible in every single way, right? They're not good at offense or defense. Right. Marcus Smart is a better than average defender, okay? He's a plus defender in the NBA, okay? Yeah. The problem I have with Marcus Smart is he thinks he needs to play offense. And he thinks he's a point guard. And, and for some reason, so does the Celtics organization because they've left him there for quite some time. Yeah. And he's, he won defensive player of the year, which just pisses me off to no end. Because if you took a poll of how many players in the NBA, what's 15 times 30, 450 players. If you asked the 450 players in the NBA to name their defensive player of the year last year, if you don't let the Celtics vote, nobody would ever have voted for him. He wasn't, the, he wasn't even in the top three best defenders on his team. Yeah, a hundred percent, and I, and I get that. And I, again, he's a guy. I didn't put him in that gunner, although he's kind of a gunner. I didn't put him in that gunner list that I had. Um, yeah, I don't think that he, I don't think that he plays terrible. Like from a standpoint of basketball IQ, I don't think he makes terrible decisions all the time. He will take a bad shot, obviously. Uh, but no, you're right. From a standpoint of how he carries himself, uh, he definitely warrants being on the team. I just couldn't fit him. You're, and and again, there's a guy on my first team who I think far surpasses him in exactly what you're talking about. Here's the problem, Jonathan. He's taking double-digit field goals every season. I know. Listen I know. to his – I want you to sit down and listen to this and tell me I don't think there's another player that can replicate what I'm about to describe for you as far as Marcus Smart's nine-year NBA career okay. and his field goal percentages. Are you ready? Yep. Starting with his rookie year. This is a field goal percentage, not three-pointers. Field goals. Right. 36%. 34%, 35%, 36%, a whopping 42%, 37%, 39%, 41%, and 43%. That's impossible. That's impossible. 385, 0. 0.385. He's a 38.5% career shooter, and he's taking double-digit field goal per, field goal attempts every single game. That drives me nuts. I'm going to start. I'm, I'm already starting to, to – Regret not having him on my team. You need to you need to reconsider. We'll revisit this. We'll go back. Give me your last one on your uh, second team. And and this is this is gonna throw people for a loop. I just can't stand the way this dude acts. I think he's whiny. I think he's soft. I think he's weird as hell. Uh, and that's Cat Carl Anthony Towns. I cannot freaking stand watching him on a basketball court at all. Can't not. And he's super talented. He's gifted. I mean, he's one of the most gifted players ever. Is he going to be the best player on either one of our active? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, he's going to be the best player. Sure. Yeah, yeah. You've yeah. always had a thing for him, um, and I'm I'm not. I can't defend him now because I traded him. Man, he got right when he got hurt. I traded him for my fantasy dynasty team. Yeah. So it was a terrible trade, but uh, I was like, yeah, my friend doesn't like him, so I'm going to trade him. So I got yeah, rid good of move. Him. And then he you know he said he's the best shooting big man ever ahead of Dirk. And and look, I, I, I mean, he is a great shooter. There's no doubt. Make one in the playoff game. Just, yeah. just yeah, well, the only way to for him to be the best shooting big man ever is if you say Dirk's not a big man. Yeah. Let's, let's be clear about that. And by oh, the yes. way, I mean, yeah. yeah, well, Dirk was as tall as Carl Anthony Towns. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he didn't, he didn't play center, but but kind of he did sometimes. You yeah. know, well, have yeah. I mean, yeah. with Dallas. Um, so yeah, that's my second team. Okay, all right. Let's move on to the first team. I'll go yeah. first. All right, uh, gladly. Let me make sure it's not shared. Uh, I'll work my way up to MVP in order of uh, <laughs> least hated to most hated. Okay. Uh, I should have called it LVP, least valuable player. Me too. Uh, 
I've got Mo Wagner on here, and this was really tough between Wes Matthews and Mo Wagner. Wes Matthews almost got the nod because he makes my life more miserable because I have to watch, you know, 60, 70 Bucks games a year. I don't have to, but I choose to. Um, but Mo Wagner's, Mo, Mo Wagner's been playing a lot lately for uh, Orlando, and he's actually been succeeding, uh, which just makes me angrier. Um, and, and the reason I like him is he's got a little bit of that thinking he's better than he is, a little bit. Um but the reason I dislike him the most is um, I just went blank because uh, he's dirty. He's the dirtiest player in the NBA. It's, it's well, that's a well-known fact. He's the dirtiest player in the entire NBA and everybody needs to be really careful around him. I haven't looked, but I bet there's a YouTube video when we go to your guy, I'll start searching, but I bet you there's a YouTube video out there about Mo Wagner being dirty. I don't even know. I haven't even searched, but I bet you there is. Um, I think you spell his name M O E which is another weird thing about it. Yeah. Um, Mo Wagner dirty. Something terrible could come up here. Hmm. Giannis headbutted him. Obviously, he probably deserved it. Deserved Al it. Horford ejected for hitting Mo Wagner below the belt. Yep. Um, Mo Wagner, ter- yeah, yeah. Draymond Green shoves Mo Wagner after a heated debate. Uh, DeRozan tries to kill Mo Wagner for a clear path foul. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. He's the dirt. Doncic got into it with him the other night. He's the he's just the dirtiest player in the NBA, and that's what he gets by on. And yeah. um, he's like a younger, not as good version of uh, somebody that's going to be on my all time team, which I'm mm. sure you can figure out. Anyway, Mo Wagner's number one for me on my first team. All I can't stand. Okay, he didn't make you the team for me. I don't pay enough attention to Mo Wagner. That's probably and this this guy probably is exactly the same situation as he is for you for me. Um, uh, Bismack Biombo. Uh, I absolutely, really? I think he's the worst player in the league that plays that plays significant minutes. Okay, um, he played when I say significant minutes, he plays about 14, 15 minutes a game. You uh, think Kaminga's better than Bismack uh, Biombo? A lot. I disagree. And I I think if you go look at his numbers, he averages three and a half and one and a half. Um, (laughs) One and a half what? Rebounds. Uh, I'm sorry. What? I take that back. Three and a half and three. Three and a half and three and a half. He averages almost four rebounds a game. So let's Uh, give the man a little bit of credit. Okay. He He shoots 39% from the free throw line. What's the problem? So that's a major issue that I have, right, is the fact that when he goes to the free throw line, um, this is your only job. You're going to play 15 minutes a game. Um, you're not a good rebounder. You're not a good scorer. So, you know what? Spend all practice shoot free throws so that you can make the two free throws that you'll take all week. Um, and then on top of that, I think he is much like um, the NASA sign of just much less athletic. He's going to hurt somebody on the floor. He does not belong anywhere near a basketball court. He's spastic is what you're getting at. Yeah. yeah. He, he's like a he's like a veteran uh, finesse. Dude, he's the guy in the pickup game that right when you let it go by passing it to him, if you did, you're like, why did I do that? Yeah. Why you did I regret do that? it immediately or you freeze him out. There's a chance he could kick one of his teammates or elbow somebody in the face, hurt a fan. He's going to come set a screen for you and hurt you. You know what I'm yeah. saying? One of those deals. Yeah. Can I, I, I mean, I just didn't have him up there because – I just don't ever see him play, but he's playing 13 and a half minutes a night. The one thing that bothers me the most is when people take shots they don't deserve, and he doesn't do that. So he's only 2.7 field goal attempts a game. Yeah. Um, I, hate watching but, him I hate watching him run. That, that, that's when you know you can't stand watching Wow, him. you really don't like Bismack Biombo. <laughs> that's that's really news to me. This is the first time I've ever heard, heard you like let this out. Yeah. This, is, this year's the first time I've really watched him play it at all, and uh, I can't stand it. So Okay. That's I, my next one on my first team is Kaminga. Uh, and, and this really stems from so many people telling me how talented he is who don't know anything about basketball. Right. Um, if, if talent is – basically, I feel like I'm watching Usain Bolt play basketball. I just feel like if you, if you said, Jonathan Kaminga, go score a touchdown, he could probably do it. If, yeah. I, if I threw a ball up into the end zone, Kaminga could probably jump up in the air and grab it. Right. But that's not basketball. Right. You have to dribble it. Yeah. Uh, you have to pass it. You have to make a shot occasionally, yeah. and he does none of those things well. And mm-hmm. I just honestly, I, I honestly don't, I don't believe he's going to be in the NBA for five years. I, that's just my personal opinion. I, I don't think it. he's an NBA player five years from now. Yeah, I could see it for sure because there's he brings nothing to the table. That's the thing, zero. I mean, 
you can't tell me he brings athleticism to the table whenever his athleticism translates into nothing on the basketball court. I know, and so. I want I don't want people to be confused. There's a lot of people who bring nothing to the table. Like people yeah. are probably screaming at the screen. There's a lot of people. Yes, but but I don't have to listen to experts tell me that he's the next great one. Is th right. that he's going to take the torch and continue this dynasty? I, I can't take it anymore. Like I can't I can't understand how you can watch a basketball game and tell me that Jonathan Kaminga is going to be, you know, the next Jason Tatum. I mean, have you, has anybody ever seen him dribble a basketball? So that's the other thing. And, and I've, I've questioned um, agents and scouts. Like when I have conversations with them about this stuff, I'm like, okay, so when you, when you talk to players and you find out, first of all, you know, are they quality character human beings that you want as a part of your franchise? Okay. Why is the next question not, can he play basketball? As opposed not to your 40, not your max verts, right. not how many bench reps you can get with 225. Kevin Durant got zero, by the way. Right. Uh, how about this? D d has he ever succeeded playing basketball against people on his level? Right. I'm not talking about at your prep school where, where yeah. you have, you know, six other NBA guys around you and you're playing other guys that can just run and jump and can't play basketball. I'm talking about like real basketball. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I'm with you, dude. Yeah. So my next guy on my list and – and this guy does warrant thinking he's the guy, unfortunately, um, and drives me nuts with how many foot on the line twos he takes, um, doesn't care, has no concept of shot selection, and that's Dylan Brooks. I cannot stand watching Dylan Brooks play basketball. Cannot stand it because I watched him the other night whenever he uh, he locked up your boy Middleton, who's still not obviously healthy. Um and he's like staring him down and this I'm like oh he my mean God. faces people like he he tries to like oh my God. intimidate other grown like NBA all-stars yeah. by staring at them yeah and, and who who does he think he is like that's the problem and for that reason he's my MVP he, he's a person wow and that's why I asked you does a player have to be retired to be on your all-time team because he's my number one most hated player to watch in the history of the NBA oh uh, yeah he number can't one. be on the historical team he oh, he, I, no, I, that's why I asked you the question. Oh, yeah. I said, can current players be historical? Because yeah. Dylan Brooks is at the top of the pyramid of or, or at the bottom of the upside down pyramid of players that I would never, ever want to watch play another game of basketball. Oh, no, 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 I hate no, no. it. He's, he's, he's number one for me. I know I know where you're going with your list and I know you've got your your all time hatred. He's number one for me. He's number one for me because the disparity between, you know, the shots he deserves the attention he deserves, the accolades he received, I, the disparity is so great. I cannot take it. And I can't, I just can't take it. I can't well, take the behavior. Yeah. We're definitely on the same page about that for sure. He's my MVP. Yeah. The yeah. cat's out of the bag, dude. He's my MVP. He he's got not, every vote. He's, he's not close MVP. to my MVP, but he's definitely on my first team. Definitely. He's not close to your active MVP. He's not got even, to be close. He's not crazy. even close. I'm trying to think of who. Oh, I know. I know where you're going. I know where you're going. I know exactly where you're going. You're going to a much worse plan. You know what? He might be my co-MVP. You're right. You're Because something happened last night. Something happened last night that, that might make Dylan Brooks fall back to co-MVP because the next guy comes up. So I've said Kaminga. You now know Dylan Brooks is my co-MVP. Yep. Uh, I gave you Mo Wagner. I've given you three. Have you given me three or two? So I said – oh, that's right. You said Kaminga. Yeah. Okay, so I'll go to my next, and I'm actually going to give you three – I'm, I'm sorry. I'm going to give you – oh, I just realized this, dude. I put six people on my first team. So I'm going to take – I got to take Biombo off then and drop somebody. Probably have to drop Clarkson and put Biombo on the second team. Nonetheless, okay. because I couldn't distinguish between the two of these guys. So the Morris twins, I have them both on my first team. You count I, that as one. No, you count that as one. Same player. Okay, yeah, good. You count that as one player. And by the way, taking Biombo from first to second team, is that a promotion? Does that mean – you like <laughs> yeah. promoted Biombo to the second. It is. And he's and getting closer to your MVP ladder. <laughs> <laughs> and kicking Clarkson off into just right. my honor list outside right. of the game. Um, but no, the Morris twins, definitely. The Morris twins. Okay. Yeah. Um, they have carried themselves since they entered the league as though they thought they should be all stars. They take uh almost as many contested mid range pull ups as Jalen Brown does. They're just not any good at them at all. And if so they just can't create any space. Yeah. Are they tough guys? Because that's that's the that's the stigma is that they're they're like real yeah, tough guys, yeah. like re, in real life tough guys. 
No, you know why? Because people mess with them. There are guys in the league, Stephen Adams, uh, Jonas Valanciunas. Uh, by the way, did you see Valanciunas when he stepped into that deal the other day after Zion dunked the ball? Everybody wanted to fight, and then he stepped to the forefront, and everybody huge. stopped. Yeah, everybody stopped. Yeah, um, I'm trying to think of some other. I mean, in the past, Charles Oakley, Anthony Mason, guys like that. But I'm, but no, no, no. The pe- people mess with the Morris twins. They do. So you know, All the time. well, didn't didn't Jokic knock his ass out for like half a season <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> with with a little check? You know, yeah. like you would never like. Let me ask you this question. Let's just put it to the audience. Comment below if you think Nikola Jokic would have done to Ron Artest what he did <laughs> to or, or Alvin Robertson, yeah. right? Or yeah. Charles Oakley um, yeah. or somebody like that, what he did to that Morris twin. And I, don't, I get them both confused because I think they're the same player exactly. So you can, can, you can include those as one player. Okay. All right. So I got two people left on my first team. Okay. Um, God, I dislike these two guys so much. Again, positive is a positive change. I think we're going to have the same two. I really do. I think we're going to have the same two. You're not going to have Della Vadova. Oh, that's true. I don't. You're right. Yeah. So Della, we'll go Della Vadova. And, and Della Vadova, Della Vadova made it on my first team years ago. So people that are watching the show are going to be like, why? He never gets in the game. No, he, no, he's been on my team. He's a permanent fixture until the day he's no longer in the NBA. He will mm. always be on my first team. And he used to be the MVP, but he's not anymore. Uh, because Dylan Brooks uh, is is on TV so much and talked about so much, and Delvadova is an afterthought, but he continues to steal money from NBA teams. So I just want to remind people: uh, number one, some people have nicknamed him Outback Jesus, and so again, people in Australia who watch the show, I love you guys. There's great card collectors in Australia. There's great huge basketball fans in Australia. Some of the smartest basketball people I know in Australia. I know y'all love Delvadova. I cannot stand watching him play basketball. He is the worst NBA basketball player that I have ever seen start to finish. You know, Mm -hmm. some people hit a wall and become absolutely horrible on the court. He's always been horrible. And he Mm -hmm. got so much publicity for the year he locked up Steph Curry, which is another way of saying inexplicably, the referees decided to let him do whatever he wanted to Steph Curry with whatever body part he chose to for an entire NBA Finals. And it drives me nuts that he got credit for that. And the one thing I hate the most is that when you look at him on Basketball Reference, it says 2016 NBA champ, and I, I think it should come down. Yeah, I think they should take that off because he's a cheater. He's dirty as hell. He stole – hold on, let me count how many millions he stole from my bucks. 42. It's down here somewhere. It's down here somewhere. How much did he steal? Where did he steal? You said it earlier. No, he stole 19.2 $19.215 million from my bucks. Thank God they moved him to the Cavs in a trade and didn't have to eat those last two years. Uh, but this guy, the worst basketball player I have ever seen alive, uh, made $42 million in the NBA. Bro, so he almost made $10 million a year, four straight years. Almost. Worst, I, I, to, to this day, I think, and I know a lot of people have been paid a lot of money, and I know there's like – you know, Chandler Parsons had a huge contract, like dollar for dollar, as far as how bad this guy is and how he had zero upside. I, I honestly think that that 40 million might be the worst contract in the history. Let of me NBA. put it in perspective for our viewers. Okay. And I know inflation and time changes and all that. That's fine. Before Michael Jordan's last couple of years with the Bulls, where he was making $30 million a year, his contract annually was $3 million a year. $3 million. So, um, Oh my God! Matthew Delavadova made three times that four years in a row, and he did it for my team. That's the problem, right? Yeah. He, he'd yeah. probably be on my second team either way, but first team status unquestionably because he was a buck, and so I had to watch him. I mean, if if you if yeah. you interviewed my wife and said, "Hey, have you ever heard your husband complain about any players in the NBA? Does he have a problem with any players?" She would she would know the name. My my oh, yeah. children know the name. Yeah, you know, everybody knows the name of this obscure guy that plays because he just irks me so bad. So he's, he's a uh, first team for me. Give me your, give me your uh, next to last first team. And I want to clarify for the viewers. I would have definitely had him on my team, but I didn't want to steal any of your thunder because I Fair. know how I, much I he, appreciate means, it. he means to you. I know how much he means to you. So okay. I, he means a lot to me. Yeah. Um, uh, number two on my list is uh, Draymond Green, who I, oh, I I'm, I'm, I'm angry just thinking about the fact that he's going to make the Hall of Fame. He is um, a multiple-time NBA champion. He is, in my opinion, 
in my humble opinion, I think he's the most overrated basketball player in the history of sports. Maybe the most overrated athlete in the history of team sports. I think he's that. Um, he's going to get more credit for doing less than anybody ever. Does this Is he a perfect fit for the Warriors? Yeah, absolutely. But here's my reasoning behind it. He can't shoot. Okay. He's an overrated individual defender. He's a great team defender. Nobody can argue that. Okay. Um, he's a decent rebounder at best. Um, he initiates offense and people think he can handle the ball, but the reality is nobody's close enough to him ever to determine whether or not he really can handle the ball. And then his antics on the floor and how he acts and how he's the only human being for some reason who can get away with screaming. Directly. That's my question. That's my question. And Doncic is creeping into that category and he's got a reason, but, but why is Draymond Green allowed to treat NBA referees the way he does? Why is he allowed? I don't understand why they let him get away with that. Here's my biggest issue. Okay. He's the one guy in the history of sports, probably, that if you took him and put him on a mediocre to bad team, he may have made it in the league for two or three years. Now, he's a Hall of Famer. Hall of Famer. Dennis Rodman, I don't want to hear about Dennis Rodman. Dennis Rodman was great with Detroit before, right? Yeah. Then he starts coloring his hair. He was great. He was defensive player of the year a couple of times. With San Antonio, he was effective, right? Fantastic. He, dude, stop. If, if anybody compares him, he, here's why they compare him to Dennis Rodman is because they're just trying to find another dude out there that didn't score that's in the Hall of Fame. So you want to compare him to Dennis Rodman and Ben Wallace, you need to go do your research. There's a now, big difference between those players. Tell me this also, and I know you agree with this, okay? As far as him initiating offense, right, um, and you talk about the Warriors offense, this and that. Dude, I think that part is the most overrated as well. Because look at the number of ridiculously difficult shots that Steph Curry and Klay Thompson make every night. So just because you threw them the ball to do that, like, are you serious? Like, does that make you a playmaker now? Give me a break, man. There, there, there's no way to, to, to stat this, but not all assists are the same. And yeah. I'll be the first one to admit, Giannis, half of his assists are sprint dribble to the wing, yeah. handoff, Semi screen slash butt bump interfere, right? Random, con, you know, Connaughton, Wes Matthews, uh, you know, Brooke Lopez, Middleton, Drew Holiday, circle dribble coming off that dribble handoff, shoot yep. it. Yep. That is an assist the same way running the break and making a no look pass or looking off a defender and making the correct pass to the opposite corner is an assist. Yep. And uh, that's a shame because I think a lot of Draymond Green's assists would be, um, you know, in that lower tier category of how much did you really have to do with the assist that just got put in your stat column? Right. Um, I'm with you, dude, in every way. I, I don't have him in my top 10. And I'll be honest, it was probably an oversight. I was probably overreacting to a bad George Hill game. Uh, where he probably should have been. I, I still wouldn't put Draymond on my first team. As far as the players uh, who are perceived as better than they are, nobody is perceived being better who isn't than Draymond. I shouldn't right. say. I mean, he's a, he's a, he's a he's a better than average NBA player, but he's perceived as is he? Well, the Warriors never would have done that without Draymond Green. Uh, oh yeah, um, I can think of sixty no. players that would have made to, that team better than Draymond Green. I want you to tell me. I want you to. Be honest. Is he a, a better than average NBA player for his career? Is he? He had one year. I want you to go look at the stats. He had one year where he shot, I think, close to forty percent from the three point line, and that was the year the seventy two, the seventy three win team. Um, other than how that, how is he getting open? How, how is he getting open? <laughs> other than that, he is a miserable offensive player from a standpoint of shooting the ball. Okay. I mean, just um, for instance, you know, look, I'm not the analytics guy, Jonathan. You know, the average PER in the NBA is what? 15. Yeah. Draymond's career, 14.7. This year, he's 12th. So he's below average. Like I said, he's below average on PER. He, who are some guys that we've always said, look, if you just plug him in, they're better, who do the same thing as Draymond? Who are some of those guys? I'm trying to think of uh, 200 people. No, I, no I'm, trying, I'm, I'm saying, what are some of their names is what I'm asking you. Like, uh, like I, I was thinking, like uh, Eric Gordon. I'm, I'm sorry, Aaron Gordon. Is Aaron Gordon like 
Well, yeah, he's way better. But how many people would honestly say on TV that Aaron Gordon's better than Draymond Green? Oh, nobody. Nobody. But yeah, like for instance, Aaron Gordon's career PER is fifteen point five, and this year it's twenty one point four. He's right. better. Uh, who are some more threes? Give me some more threes. Give me some more guys. Like yeah, I guess he's a four, really, right? I mean, he's a uh, how about? I know this is going to drive you nuts. Name them. Like Marcus Morris is the oh. same player. The same PER. I mean, I'm looking at. It. I, won't do I that mean, one. there's never yeah. been anybody more right place, right time than, 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 than Draymond Green. That's and that's why you can't compare him to, to Ben Wallace or Rodman because they were in different places at different yeah. times and they are Hall of Famers. And, and they're they actually were, really good at something. They were great at something, right? We've taken, I mean, that's enough. We, we agree on that. I should have put him on my second team for sure, but maybe pushing first team. Yeah. The reason that neither one of us – well, the reason I couldn't put him on my first team is my number five – and uh, and I think he's your MVP. I mean, yes. clearly, it's got to be Pat Beverly, right? Oh, without question. Yeah, without question. So Pat Beverly's your MVP. Yeah. He's mine. And speak of the devil, we had this scheduled seven days ago. And last night, this happens. I'm going to pull this up. I'm going to put it on screen share. I've got the volume on. And I'm going to hit play. This is Patrick Beverly. I want you to first look at the score and time. Okay? Yeah. No LeBron. No Anthony Davis. You're getting your ass handed to you. You are literally down 26 points to the Phoenix Suns, and I don't know if Booker played. I I, I think he might have taken off the, the game after he got 58 or whatever, but he might – I don't know. Maybe he did play. I don't know. Uh, but know the time and score. You're down 26, and you've only played 24 minutes. Let's put right. it that way. And also, I want you to take into account, and we'll look at his stats after. Uh, here's what happened. Yeah, yeah, I did actually see that. The small thing, right? Yeah. Watch it again. Chris Paul goes for the swipe, doesn't get it. Patrick yeah. Beverly does the little small thing. Too small. Yeah. Keep in mind they're the exact same size. Yeah, because you're down 24 now. And keep so, in mind his name is Chris Paul. Yeah. Yeah, and let's just remember your PER is six. Yeah. You're averaging 5'3 and 2.6, shooting 33% from the field, 26% from the three-point line. And you have a 42% effective field goal percentage. And I saw this the other day on TV. Um, he's the worst player in the NBA yeah. that, that gets consistent minutes. He's the worst player in the entire NBA that gets consistent minutes. And yeah. he still has the reputation of being a great defender. He's, by the way, he's 34 and a half years old. Um, but he needs to be out of the league. He's tiny. He's actually a liability on defense, believe it or not, now. Uh, because he's mouse in the house every time he touches it. Also, a horrific career field goal percentage shooter who thinks he needs to play offense. 33, 40, 42, 43, 40, 40, 42, 43, 38, 41, 41. You can't possibly shoot worse than that. That's as bad as it gets, which is probably why he began his career in Greece and Russia. Um, he should have stayed there. He should have stayed have, there. Should have finished there. No. I, don't I think know. he's an absolutely terrible player. Um, I don't know what else there is to say about him. His, his antics, his behavior – Hurting Westbrook the way he hurt him when he was trying to call a timeout. Yeah. Um, body checking uh, Aiton the other day. Um, the only way he knows to remain relevant is to do stupid shit on the court. And it's yeah. just like, I'm tired of watching it. Uh, I, I got to believe a lot of people share this opinion uh, that he is one of the worst players in the NBA right now. But if you asked him, he would probably say he's one of the 10 best defenders in the league. That's I think about, I think about what he said before the season. He was talking about uh, – I don't know, playing with AD and LeBron, and he says, well, yeah, they're playing with me. I made the playoffs last year. Perfect. Really, dude? And he gets up on the he gets up on the table, takes his jersey off because they won the play-in game last year. You know, I mean, the, the dude is just – I don't know. I, I'll, I'll never understand what NBA franchises are looking at whenever it comes to stuff like that. How do they recycle a guy like that? I mean, just look at on the floor. Oh, he brings great energy. There's a lot of freaking people. Thanasa Sana Cooper brings great energy. He can't play right. basketball, right? But this dude, and, and he's a cheap shot artist. He's a cheap shot artist on top of it. You know, he checks a lot of boxes on the all anti. Uh, anti oh, he's going to end up on my historical team for sure. But he, I oh, think no question. Yeah, he's going to easily work. I wonder who he's going to knock off. That's another discussion. All right, let's talk about our historical all anti Naismith. You ready? Yep, let's do it. Let's go you first. You want me to go first? Okay. I'm going to uh, let you talk because I think we're going to have a oof. This is going to sound weird because we've got, what, 60, 70, 80 years of NBA basketball to choose from. I think we're going to have a 
lot of overlap. The one I know will not overlap, and you know who's got to be on my team that's not on yours. But I think we're going to have maybe three, maybe four overlaps. So I'll let you go. And I don't even need to talk because I think you're going to overlap with me a lot. Okay. I, I'm going to – let me let me tell you my guys outside looking in real quick. I'll just go through them all okay. of them. Uh, Terry Teagle, for those uh, former Lakers fans, um, never met a bad shot that he didn't think was a great one. Uh, Mark Ivoroni started for the 83 Sixers, one of the greatest one-title teams ever. Uh, I don't know if he ever played basketball again after that, at least not in the NBA. <laughs> Uh, not really sure. They just wanted to force the Bobby Jones, the six man thing, I guess. Um, George McGinnis, uh, who played with Dr. J in the 70s on the Sixers team, um, for some reason thought he was the best player in the world every time he stepped on the floor and shot it. If you go back and watch an old game, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, Nick Young, who is goes against everything that is right about how to play basketball. Um and then a, a guy who actually played the right way, but has since uh, joined this list for me because of his um, incompetence and overconfidence as an announcer, and that's Eddie Johnson, um, oh, who yeah. for some reason thinks uh, I don't he, know. He's, if he had never had a show on Sirius Radio and, and been an announcer for the Suns games, he would not be on your list. Yeah, I'm fine with him. I'd be fine with him, right? But he made a comment whenever he was called out, you know, where his rank of all-time small forwards were. And John Havlicek's name was brought up, and he was like, oh, I don't know. I don't know if he's ahead of me. I'm like, so that that started the whole thing for me. But um, So I'll go that, – that, that's my outside looking in. Uh, I'll start, which I have to imagine you have this guy on the on your top five, and that is none other than Bill Beer, who um, – you know, was a solid player that people don't remember this, okay, probably. Before Lane Beer became a super cheap shot artist, um, you know, bad boy, whatever, fake bad boy, uh, only acted tough because Rick Mahorn was there uh, right by him. Um, he was actually an NBA All-Star, like two or three times. Was a pretty good offensive Four player. times. Yeah, may, um, was a great rebounder. Um, I think he averaged like 13, 14 rebounds a game a couple of years. Led the um, league one year. Yeah. So, uh, but I mean, I, I don't know anybody historically who wouldn't have this guy on their list. So I'm assuming he's on yours as well. He's on my list, clearly. Every, every, anybody who likes either Jordan, the Bulls, or like beautiful basketball has to hate this guy because he tried to take that away from all of us. And he was right. spear, he was the spearhead, he was the linchpin. I mean, he was the ringleader of all the atrocities that the Detroit Pistons unleashed on the rest of the NBA. It took us into one of the darkest eras. What's funny is the greatest player of all time emerged as a world icon and the greatest sports figure that ever lived during an era where these assholes were allowed to darken and make basketball disgusting and a horrible product to watch. Yep. Um, and so even through all that darkness – Jordan emerged as the like literally I know this sounds corny but like the most beautiful basketball player of all time the way he approached it the the what he did who he did it to everything about it the the good beat evil and so we need we need Lambeer we need evil in the world to have good so we needed Lambeer but that doesn't mean we can't list them on our team as guys that we hated the most um the sad thing is he like he could have been like a Marc Gasol type player and a player that people like, but he was just an asshole in real life. I mean, that's just yeah. the problem. You know, I, mean, I don't know what else to say. Like people didn't like him. His teammates didn't like him. Um, you know, I mean, they loved him when they were playing, but they didn't like him. Um, mm -hmm. Certainly none of his opponents liked him. Um, I'm going to say one of those guys that I don't think he could have been traded. No, I agree with that. You, you see, gonna, he, he went too far too many times on too many important people uh, in a game. In the morning. Right. Yeah. P people just dodge bullets with him. I mean, some of the fouls he committed, you know, him getting punched in the face by Bird was one of the greatest things. Um, uh, there's, yeah, Lambeer is, he's got to be on everybody's list unless you're from Detroit. I can't imagine. Uh, well, when Bird, when Bird, who rarely acknowledges anybody, acknowledges that he still to this day can't stand you as a human being, that means you're a pretty bad dude. Like, <laughs> he would just normally dismiss somebody like that, you know? Yeah. Uh, he acknowledges it. I'm, I'm going to assume there's another guy on your list from that team, too. He didn't make my list, though. Um, and, and he didn't make my list for one reason. What? Now, now keep what? in mind, as a human being, no, 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 we're talking about on the basketball court, right? So as a human being, like, that's where the separator is. We, oh, you, 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 you took off off the court? 
I, no, no, no. I didn't take it completely off, but I loved watching him play at a point in his career. Like he was a lot of fun to watch play. So I had to separate the two. And it was like, gosh, dog, that's tough because he would have been next on my list. I so separate. I really went heavy here and I'm probably going to regret it now. I couldn't separate it. Yeah, it's tough to do. I know. Anyhow, go ahead. Go, why don't you go ahead? And well, Isaiah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you're yeah. talking about Isaiah. I couldn't separate it. I, I, I can't. I, I think he's the fakest. I, this is not just me. Do yeah. your research. I, I think he's he's the scourge of the league. He's yeah. despicable in every way. The things he said, the things he did, the team he played for, um, the way he treated people, the New York scandal, how bad he was as a GM, how dumb he is as an announcer. Everything about him, I can't stand it. Mm -hmm. yeah. I just can't stand him. I can't stand that guy. I think he's the biggest fake liar that that has ever been in or around the sport of basketball, the NBA basketball, for sure. He made it right. He has. I don't know how you separated the two. As well, a player, I'm going to tell. As you a player, good. As a player, where is he rank all time point guards? Top five, for sure. Jordan ranks him second. You know, <laughs> it's got to be hard for him behind who? Paxson? Magic. Yeah, he <laughs> said. He said. I think Magic Johnson is the greatest point guard ever. Uh, he said. Right behind that is Isaiah Thomas. He said. So as a player, I respected his game. This, that, the other. He said. But. I just freaking hate him as a person. So I'm going to tell you how I separated it because I, I was actually going to save this to the end, but I, I've kind of let the cat out of the bag. I did separate it because I put him in a category of his own. I didn't even allow him on my first team. I put him as he would be the most hated athlete in the history of team sports for me. Um, really? So, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I have to think about that. Yeah. Uh, it's a book, and, and for me, because we're so close to basketball, right? There's a yeah, there. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a lot to take in. I'd have to yeah. think about that, but um, I'll give you my next guy though, because Isaiah's in a in a league of his own. I, I just hold on. Can we get back to Isaiah? Like, I don't like how he's got a, a pass to go do. I, like, yeah, you know. Again, I don't think he needs to be incarcerated. Okay, although that wouldn't be bad for the world, but like, he shouldn't be allowed on like national TV and smiling and joking and laughing. No. You're terrible at your job too. Like he's a horrible at his job. Like he's not good at his job. So why are we Absolutely. listening? To we, we he provides people. nothing analytically when it comes to discussing the sport of basketball. Nothing. And before people are like, "Well, he played in the NBA and he did it," I was like, "No, there's a lot of people that were geniuses on the court that are really stupid and don't know basketball." I, I know that's hard for people to believe, yep. but it's true. A lot of the best basketball players, I'm talking about genius level basketball players, are really stupid analysts. Yeah, hundred percent. And I'll be the first one to admit some of them are freaking genius analysts. I love listening to some of them as analysts as well, but uh, he's just one that I don't. I, I, just, I think he's stealing money uh, from, from wherever he works. I don't even remember. NBA TV, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's definitely stealing money. But, again, it comes down to being fake, right? And that's why people give him money. And drives me nuts, man. Every industry. Uh, okay, so Isaiah's on your team. My next guy on my list um, is Anderson Verjao, who um, was – like when it comes to just the aesthetical no. beauty of watching basketball, um, he was at the top of the list of the worst guys you could. And I'm not just talking about the hair flopping all over the place. I'm just talking about in general, he was miserable to watch play basketball. Absolutely. Yeah, he John, like that's an L skit on the basketball court. You that's need to turn league pass onto Orlando Magic games. I think you're sleeping on Mo Wagner as being Anderson Varejao light. He's a lot like him. I'm yeah. telling you, he's a lot like him. You need to watch. Okay. It's gross. It's gross. You need you need to check it out. Okay. Uh, I, I have no problem with that Anderson Vera show. <laughs> He's not on my list. We don't have nearly as much overlap as I thought we would. We, we might. We might end up having a couple. Who, who else you got? Who's next? Well, I'm, you're going to have Paul Pierce, I know, because he's going to be your MVP. So, uh, Paul Pierce, I'll, I'll, I should let you talk about him. Um, again, Hall of Famer. Deserves to be a Hall of Famer. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, um, again, it, it's funny that we have – people that are so different, you know, like Paul Pierce and PJ Tucker, right? Paul Pierce is a 700 times the player that PJ Tucker was, but Paul Pierce is one 700th of the player that he thinks he is. Yeah. So that's my problem with him. Like he, he would never let Kobe separate like in speech or in discussions or things like that. He would never let it be. Yeah. Kobe's here and I'm here. Everybody else, kind of just gradually accepted where they belonged on that hierarchy. And you know me, I'm not a big Kobe guy, but like the fact that Pierce was always trying to say it was me and Kobe, Reggie Miller did the same thing, but yeah. for not some reason, 
Not for like some that. reason, it didn't rub me as wrong. But but now when you hear Reggie Miller talk about Jordan, he talks about him with incredible reverence, right? Yeah. I, I, for totally years, different. we've heard it. It's yeah. just different with Pierce. I, I think if you ask Pierce to this day, he would just say, oh, man, he was in a better situation or he had better teammates. He would make some shit up instead of just saying, these guys are here and I'm just a notch below them. But, um, you know, people to this day, if you ask him who the best Celtic of all time was, is there any doubt that Paul Pierce might say himself? I mean, no, he could say it himself. I mean, Bill Russell, Bird, Havlicek. I mean, we go down the list, a lot of them. But there's a chance uh, Pierce would say himself. There is. And he also – I heard him not too long ago talk about LeBron and saying, well, I mean, look, let's, let's, let's be real about this. If I played with Kevin Love and Kyrie Irving and – and uh, Anthony Davis and so oh, on and so forth. I'd be sitting, he's like, I'd be sitting on five or six championships. Easy, easy. So ultimately he's saying he's better than LeBron James. That's right. And, and that, that's the problem. Eddie Johnson is like the poor man's version of Paul Pierce. Those dudes can't let go of the fact that they just weren't quite as good as they really thought right. they were or wanted to be. And so now they want to make sure everybody knows it. And it's like anybody who does anything like that, anybody who tells you how much money they make, they probably don't make that much money. Yeah. Anybody tells you how great they are at something, they're just not, they weren't that great at something. Yeah, they you're just trying too hard. Yeah, it, the problem with Pierce is that we have access to the internet. <laughs> so yes. we can go find out exactly what you did or didn't do. Right. Uh, and again, well, way, you played with Kevin Garnett and Ray Allen too. And, you right. yeah. and, and, and Rondo, who's no slouch. Prime yeah. Rondo was no freaking slouch. Yeah. Um, and he played on one of the best teams of all time. And that was a really special team. It was a really good team. But uh, yeah, Pierce is on your list and my list. So well, Pierce sums it all up was when he got carried off the court and 15 minutes later came back and scored 15 points in yeah. the fourth quarter after why me, why me, screaming why me yeah. in the finals against the Lakers. But, but did he get carried off or did he get taken off in a wheelchair? Well, he got carried into a wheelchair. Into and, then it. Yes. and then came back on and scored 15 in the fourth quarter. Yes. yes. Heroic. Well, Heroic effort. Hero, amazing. Willis Reed type shit. Unbelievable. Uh, okay, so we've got three down. Yep. Okay. Me or you? It's you. Okay. Uh, Antoine Walker is on my list. Um, and I actually, you know, I listen to Antoine. He does some stuff on SEC Network. Seems like a funny dude. Like, he'd be all right guy. But watching him play basketball um, – he was a big, he was a bigger Jordan Clarkson, that's for sure. Man, he loved man. to shoot the ball from puts, three, oh, from three. Field goal he, percentage be damned. I'm going to yes. take threes. He put some numbers up. He won a title with uh, Miami. Field goal percentage was not a number that he put up. Um, field goal percentage was a number that he just didn't acknowledge. And uh, just watching him take the shots that he took and then kind of um, shuffle around the court um plays zero defense whatsoever um you know he's a good player he was a good player but let me just, let me give you some numbers i'll share them he was a good player and that's the thing you don't have to be a bad player to make this list in fact most of the ones on our all-time list are really good players yeah. i mean the dude averaged 21 2 3 4 5 6 6 yeah. times he made three all-star teams um here's the issue and i think this is the problem that you had with him is that he thought he deserved all these field goal attempts, and he was shooting a ridiculously horrible percentage, 42, 42, 41, 43, 41, 39, 38. 40. How do you make an all-star team shooting 38% from the field? And, and taking 32. 21 shots. And 61% free throws. Yeah. I, Unbelievable. What in the hell was happening that year? You would never make an all-star team now doing that. 42, 42, 41, 44, career high 44%. Yeah. 43, 39, 36 to end it. Unbelievable. I mean, it, it's incredible. Career PER just over average. Yeah, and he he's a dude who I just, like, he would have been miserable to play with. That's the way I look at it. He'd have been miserable to play with. Miserable to play with. Unquestionably, he would have been horrible to play with. Same PER as Lambeer, ironically. Oh, huh. interesting. Interesting. Huh. All right, who's your last guy? I got two more. Okay. I'll, One uh, of them. Go ahead. You have Kendrick Perkins. I do not. And I, and, Did you and not I, have Kendrick Perkins? No, no, no. And as we were talking about it, I was like, I, it came into my mind. I was like, <laughs> Come on, oh, dude. I, don't, I screwed it up. So for those of you who aren't familiar uh, with my life story, <laughs> believe it or not, even though I've talked about it a hundred times, 
at one point I was a very, very, very big Oklahoma City Thunder fan. Jonathan, you remember those years uh, when, when it was very clear they were the team of the future. I kind of jumped on board. Call me a fair weather fan. Fine. They had just moved and uh, it was exciting and it was a new brand and it was Durant, Westbrook, Reggie Jackson, Serge Ibaka, James Harden. Oh, Harden was with Reggie Jackson at the same time. I, I didn't think they would play together. I'm pretty okay. sure. All right. Uh, and then um, Jeff Green, yep. right? And, and yep. people forget, young Jeff Green was supposed to be really, really good. Never really quite got there, but he was a like I think he was a number five overall pick out of Georgetown. Just absolutely preposterous wealth of talent, right? Yes. And they decided that what they needed to get over the hump was to trade Jeff Green and some other stuff. I can't remember. I think it ended up being um, a big, uh, another big uh, straight out of high school guy. I don't know. They went to the Celtics, but they got Kendrick Perkins in return. And Kendrick Perkins basically single handedly was the reason they didn't win an NBA title. That, cool. That's the long and short of it. Um, and he repeatedly talked about how. Uh, um, you know, good he was, how big of an offense, uh, defensive force he was. Um, he was a ho- he, he might be the worst offensive big man who tries to tried to play offense that I've ever seen. Let's put it that yeah, way. He started on that Celtics team that won a title, which is very unfortunate. Fine. Very unfortunate. Fine. Go ahead and name the other four. No, of course. But I'm yeah. saying it's very unfortunate because now that makes him think. You know, I, I was a, a a viable member of a championship team. You know, and let's pull up Kendrick a- Perkins' numbers and oh. share those. Uh, <laughs> ten career per, ten higher than uh, I thought. <laughs> higher than I thought, honestly. I mean, really, huh? that's how, much so, higher than I thought. Yeah. So he <laughs> five five and one yeah. career. Yeah. Fifty nine percent free throw shooter. Fifty three percent from the field. Fourteen five years. five and one. Five, five, and one. Five, five, and one. No, 782 14, games. 14 years he played. They paid him to play basketball for 14 years. Yep. And I would look at his salary, but he played so long ago, he probably didn't make that much compared to these guys now. He probably made less than Del Vidova, put it that way. God. He just kept doing it, Jonathan. They just kept playing him, and they kept putting him in the lineup. And I don't understand it. Um, towards the end of his career, he knew he was not allowed to shoot, obviously. Uh, here's the thing. You separated, you know, I separated it here because I actually don't mind listening to him talk. At first, I was like, this is going to be an absolute disaster. Yeah. I don't mind him as an analyst. He's, he does, you know, he knows, but then he'll say some, you know, ridiculous outlandish stuff and just kind of stick with it. But I think he's just doing it almost like for the Shaq Barkley type thing where just to get clicks and stuff like that. So I think he sometimes says stuff he doesn't believe, but I don't mind listening to him. Yeah. But, uh, He's 38. That's crazy. How old him, and Richard Jefferson, him and Richard Jefferson's dynamic is pretty funny whenever they go at yeah, each other. Yeah, because Richard Jefferson's smart and he's dumb. Yeah. It yeah. really is funny. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a funny pairing. It's a really funny pairing. Richard yeah. Jefferson is really sharp. I really like listening to him yeah. a lot. Uh, yeah. And he also toes the line and probably goes a little bit too far with some of the stuff he says, which is another reason why I really like him, because at yeah. one point he's going to say something he shouldn't. Yeah. Uh, um, all right, yeah, Kendrick Perkins makes my all-time team. So, so my all-time team so far is Lambeer, Isaiah, Paul, uh, Paul Pierce, and Kendrick Perkins. I got one left that'll not be on your team, but you've got two left. No, you got one left. I've only got one left. Yeah, and, and this is a this is a historic one for me, right? It's a it's a long time. You, you are well aware of my disdain for Rasheed Wallace, who um, everybody you know who played with him said he was a great teammate. Um, he did win a title in Detroit. Um, he was a very skilled, talented player, all those things. Uh, his antics on the court um, and the way that he the way he behaved and acted, it just drove me nuts. It, yeah. it absolutely drove me nuts because I feel like he could have been so much better than he was. Um, and then he just says some of the dumbest things you can ever imagine saying. Yeah. For a guy who was actually a smart player. Like yeah. he was a smart player, dude. Good passer, super yeah. talented man. Dude, he was, you know, you know, a couple guys, uh, and and Jo might have been better. Jermaine O'Neal might have been better, but those two guys, kind of that that mid '90s or late '90s into the yeah. like 2010 ish area, those two guys are guys that nobody will ever talk about that were really a problem. Like teams game plan against those two guys. Those guys were really freaking good. Him and Jermaine O'Neal really stood out to me as two yep. guys that just nobody ever talks about. They were awesome. 
Yeah, and he he uh I mean even at the very end, you know, when he joined a Celtics team that was on their last wheel and they almost beat the Lakers in that seventh game, you know, he mattered on that team, even though mm-hmm. he, you know, he he couldn't move anymore. And I think you know, as a player, I thought he would have been better. They they really called him the first stretch five, but he really wasn't that great of a shooter. That's the thing. Like if you look no, at he the, wasn't. um he was a terrible three point shooter. Right. Uh, but he was a nightmare in the post to deal with. He was a good defender. Um, and and look, he was in the era of I mean, the golden age of the power forward in, in our league, you know, yeah. like from a standpoint of Amari, yeah. um, Duncan, Dirk, Garnett. Yeah. Duncan, Dirk, Amari, Garnett. Good Lord. Yeah. Of, like, end of Malone and Barkley. Like, I mean, you know, you had all those guys. Yeah. In there. Yeah. And he was, he was Weber, you know, Chris Weber. I mean, he was in, Jeez, in that. Dude, mix. That was, that, every team had a guy like that. And he, he was, yeah. yeah it was easy so, to be forgotten. But I couldn't stand watching him. I just couldn't stand his antics on the floor. And, I wish, um, I wish, did you Google how many technicals he got that one season? I just remember that one season. Didn't he, he set the record, right? Yeah, he did, and I think Draymond may have broken it, though. Um, did he break the record? I think he may have, uh, but nonetheless, you know, he, he, he's the rare guy who actually did help teams win, but I hated watching him play. Huh, Carl Malone, it says, has the most technicals in NBA history. As a career, yeah. He has a career. Yeah. Markley, Rasheed, third. There you go. Yeah. I mean, Carl Malone played uh, probably twice as many games as Rasheed Wallace, even though Rasheed played a lot. Yeah, Three seventeen, yeah. He's got the uh, the career record of ejections. Twenty nine re- ejections is the is the highest, the most ever. Absurd. Um, he won- even once got ejected from a playoff game for continuing to stare down an official. He also set the single season record with forty one in 2000, 2001 season. So let that sink in, people. Can you imagine how much would that cost you in today's money? If you got Well, first of all, don't you get game suspensions after a certain number? Yeah, he's the reason for it. Okay, yeah. I think that's when they they, they started looking into changing that. Wow, yeah. Rasheed Wallace is third. Gary Payton fourth. Yeah, it's no coincidence that all of these dudes – well, most of these dudes are Hall of Famers. Rodney, yeah. Westbrook, yeah. Garnett, Hall of Famer, Hall of Famer, Kobe – Yep. <laughs> Jermaine O'Neal. There's my guy, Jermaine O'Neal. That's awesome, man. That's a great list. We should have we should have looked at that list beforehand. Um, all right. And last on my list, this is not going to be sexy. Most people are never going to have heard of this guy, but uh, he has a special place in my heart. Uh, John Henson. John <laughs> Henson is unquestionably number one. Uh, no Bucks player ever been more frightened to be on a basketball floor, uh, contributed less. Um John Henson, you know, it's amazing how much damage one person could do in such a short period of time. Uh, but uh, he almost made me move teams, move allegiance from the Bucks to somebody else. Uh, yeah. Ironically, he has a higher PER than uh, Bill Ambeer for his career. Are you serious? Yeah. Hold so uh, 25% from three, but felt the need to take him when he had an open three. Um He's a 17 PR. Line, seven, five, and one. And he played big minutes, man. You know, 26, 19, 17, 20. He just played so long, and they kept him so much longer than they should have. The day, um, I think he was in the same trade as Della Vadova from the Bucks to the Cavs. And I think I remember telling our, our good friend Chad Myers, this is one of the best days of my life. Uh, the day that Henson and Della Vadova, two of my all time anti Naismith players, got traded on the same day. For, uh, and I can't remember who the Cavs sent over, but I think it was – I think it might have been George Hill. And, and I was really excited about it. We're going to go this whole show, and the climax is John Henson. I, I, I could have saved, saved something better, but you kept naming my players with Lamb Beer, so I didn't <laughs> – that's it. That's, that's the show, man. Uh, that is the most negative, positive show ever. Hopefully people get a laugh out of it, man, because uh, like oh. I said, you know – I'm sure we would shake hands with all these guys, except Lambeer uh, and Isaiah. Yeah. And Del Vadova and Beverly <laughs> on the street. But everybody else we'd probably shake hands with. You know, I wouldn't be asking for no damn autograph. I can tell you that from any of these guys. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's interesting that our lists were so different. I really thought there'd be more overlap on the all-time hatred team. Run us through your all-time anti-Naismith team. Run, th- run through real quick? Yeah, say it again. So, Lambeer – Vera Zhao, Antoine Walker, Rasheed Wallace, and Paul Pierce was my MVP. Okay. So I had Pierce and Lambeer 
And then I had Isaiah, Kendrick Perkins, and Henson. Yeah, Isaiah was your MVP. Isaiah was my uh, uh, in his own league guy, for sure. Yeah. So amazing. All right. That's another episode. Um, anything else? Anything you want to talk about? When are you there? It is. That means it's time to go. Uh, when are you going to go down to a Pelicans game? We need to, you know, I need to get you and bring you down there. I got season tickets. We'll go down there and watch the game. And you can guarantee me that Zion's going to play, which it looks like he's going to play. So um, I'm in. He played last night. It didn't play great. I'll tell you what. Um, it was evident from watching that 48 minutes that Giannis is on a different level than Zion. Um, so for sure, for sure. Zion has been hot lately, but uh, last night was a little bit of a doozy for him. But uh, but JV picked him up, and Giannis was in rare form last night.